welcome to our next session, uh, which is going to be run by uh, Sundarishan Jagdishan. Uh, the title of uh, the talk is uh, Dot Tune, Illuminate Waste in Software Development. So uh, without further delay, um, thank you, Sundarishan. You can now begin. Hey, uh, thanks, thanks for the uh, kind introduction and uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon and good evening uh, to uh, all the people, depending upon the uh, uh, time zones you are uh, in. Right, so today, uh, for the next uh, 40, 45 minutes, I will uh, cover on the, uh, the dot tune uh, program. All our programs as part of our uh, transformation, uh, we uh, start with the dot, right? And primarily the tune uh, is something like, you know, uh, why do even the best people have uh, coaches uh, for them? For example, uh, why does Virat Kohli has a personal uh, coach or uh, any other uh, sports person has a personal uh, coach? Uh, everybody is performing at the uh, peak of their uh, performance, right? And then you just need that uh, small amount of uh, uh, tuning, like how you tune uh, your engine for the uh, best performance, right? If we tune in that particular aspect of it, uh, we could have uh, greater outcomes and uh, efficiency. So that's why we have named this particular uh, program as uh, dot uh, tune. Right. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, any pressing questions, uh, you know, I request the moderator uh, to uh, ask that because I don't see the chat window because I have put it in. I have the dual monitor on the other side uh, just to keep track of uh, where the uh, slides are uh, positioned and uh, moving on. And in screen mode, uh, I don't see the chat window. So if there are some pressing questions, uh, moderator, uh, do stop me and I will uh, take it at uh, uh, any point of time. Sure, sure thing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, a small uh, introduction about uh, myself, right, you know, uh, being in the uh, industry, software industry uh, from uh, 1999 onwards, uh, been a hardcore uh, telecom engineer uh, uh, in dealing with the uh, mobile switching and uh, part of uh, many of the first installations uh, all over uh, India, starting with uh, small 100 line exchanges to uh, as big as uh, 10,000 line uh, telephone exchanges and then, uh, uh, you know, part of the paging as well as the uh, cellular networks and then uh, shifted to uh, uh, software. Okay, and uh, being in the uh, industry, uh, started uh, as a test engineer to uh, start with and then grew up the uh, later. Uh, currently, uh, as the uh, program director of uh, Software Center of uh, Excellence, uh, which is a transformation uh, program in uh, Philips, uh, uh, just you know, a small one. We are the, uh, the campus which has got started in Bengaluru is uh, 25 years old uh, this year, or 25 years young uh, this year, and then so that that's what you see in the uh, the slide uh, uh, one. Okay. Um, Right. So today, uh, what I'm going to touch upon is um, what is the uh, foundational block? Okay, so I'm going to talk about something like uh, software culture, what we have uh, defined. Uh, then I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the overall view of the transformation which we are in and how does this dot tune fit into this whole uh, transformation. And then we get into the program, some pattern analysis, you know, what are the uh, results, uh, what do we want to do for uh, scaling up and so on. Um, just a caveat here, especially on the uh, return on uh, investments. I am just actually bringing a small example of return on investment uh, because many people, one of the uh, fundamental and foundational questions that uh, people ask me is that, uh, hey, okay, we have got better performance. What does it mean? Does it mean that, you know, are we going to scale down on uh, resources? Okay. This is one uh, key question that I keep getting in uh, many of my uh, uh, conversations and also in my uh, external presentations. Okay. So uh, it, it is not so uh, as we move up in the program, I will uh, talk about it. Okay. It is not. So this has nothing related with the descaling of resources or, uh, you know, reducing resources when we achieve that particular productivity uh, gain. Right. So uh, in fact, we are actually looking at how could we reposition these engineers into the new NPIs. Uh, uh, how could we make them uh, better, right? How, as each one of us individually, we could be uh, much uh, better than uh, what we are uh, today. And that's also one key reason while I'll talk about some of the uh, potential savings that we have uh, earmarked, right? I am not actually dwelling too much uh, on a very big scale uh, uh, 
uh, into this. For example, this program has uh, uh, something close to uh, uh, 15 million euros over a three year period of time. Okay, that is the overall savings that I have projected. But in this session, I'm not talking about it uh, too much. I'll be more than happy to take some of those uh, questions, you know, uh, something separately uh, outside. Right. So, so that you know, it doesn't clutter that this is not a, a, a headcount reduction or a, a key, uh, what do you call, uh, doing uh, away with uh, engineers. So I just wanted to clarify that at the uh, start. Uh, uh, you, you will see that you know one of the key things what we focus is uh, first and foremost is on the uh, software uh, culture. And then uh, when we actually started this transformation program, and then uh, interacted with multiple uh, people, we said there should be a foundational block on which you know uh, we are doing a few things. Okay, uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, uh, make innovative software and uh, innovate on making software. Here, the foundation and the fundamental question is um, uh, what is new, uh, what is innovative that I am doing. Okay, am I able to bring that why part? Uh, into each one of the uh, uh, the activities or uh, work that each one of us uh, do because this is also has a linkage with uh, neuroplasticity right the moment when we start learning something new by the key fundamental questions of why and what right each one of us start thinking in a completely uh, different uh, manner right, uh, right? Uh, there are there are tons and tons of data. That's what AI and ML all uh, do for us. And all those data are in front of us. Okay, the, the, are we collecting it? For example, some of the sessions I was actually uh, looking, uh, uh, you know, even in this conference, right? You know, we talk about so much on uh, DevOps. Uh, two key pieces over there, uh, both on the, uh, the the preventive side of it as well as the uh, the collecting of data and how do we feedback it as a continuous loop from the uh, operation sides of uh, 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 DevOps, right? So collect and exploit the data. Uh, just you know, correlating to some of the examples what we see here itself in the uh, conference. Uh, prefer show versus Tell, right this is a very uh, you know uh, uh, appealing one uh, for me right many a times people come with loads and tons of uh, ppt uh, deck right instead of it when we talk to a software engineer we just ask them to give that a hey, small increment in code don't tell us like you know uh, uh, you know hey this is what we could achieve but make a very minute and a small slice and then show that as working with your uh, uh, devotee okay try versus uh, speculate right so uh, if you want to prove a concept come and try that instead of saying that you know in a vacuum this is how uh, it will be uh, done. again prevent over uh, detect okay so we, we talked about the uh, uh, devops there um, again uh, precise and uh, fast uh, feedback how could you make the uh, the loop iterative and uh, 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 very fast in 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 all that we uh, do testing is a most important part of uh, each one of it. And in fact, you know, we always tell people do not differentiate between uh, the uh, test code versus the uh, development code, right? Uh, again, you could see that as the last point of it, as well as treat test code and source code as one and equal. For example, if you keep about, uh, let us say, on an average, when we do uh, analysis and observation, close to about 40% of the test code, uh, uh, there are, uh, you know, glaring duplications uh, over there, right? Even one line of duplication costs you uh, money, costs the organization money, because that has to be maintained. Right. It doesn't mean that it has to be only at the source level. If you see a waste anywhere, it's a waste wherever you uh, find. Okay, uh, focus on automation. Everything you can. Okay, um, uh, uh, in fact, for example, the CI for uh, CI in uh, DevOps, right? Uh, uh, automate the uh, automation. Uh, zero weight and uh, uh, queue times. Okay, uh, if you actually get into this value stream mapping, close to about very quickly you can find that the waiting time for any activity consumes close to 60% of the overall uh, time okay can we actually reduce those wait as well as the queuing time for uh, waste uh, courage and uh, humility and uh, this is where you know we also encourage each one of the uh, software software developers 
All right, you know anybody who uh, are in the field of software, be it manager, be it support staff, be it developer, a DevOps engineer, a configuration engineer, a test engineer, depending upon uh, whatever it is, right? Uh, courage and uh, humility. How can we tune each one of them to be the uh, uh, best? Okay. For these things to happen, behavior changes are key to cultural changes. Okay, if you actually look there. Uh, uh, each one of our behavior directly leads to the cultural change in the team we are in, in the place we are in, in the organization we are uh, in. So, so uh, this is the type of software culture, right? You know, which we try to spread as part of this particular uh, transformation. And you know, we could say that uh, uh, we we are seeing uh, results uh, over uh, it. Okay. Um, now, uh, coming back uh, into the uh, next steps, uh, this was a research done by uh, Microsoft. And then uh, on the right side, you could see that uh, up to 78% of the developer's time is spent in understanding the uh, code. So this is a data from uh, Microsoft uh, research, um, which means that in an eight-hour productive day for an engineer, close to six and a half to seven hours, right? The engineer just spends in understanding the uh, code. I will give you another data. For 1 million lines of Java code, right? If you have to maintain it, the cost of that maintenance today is about close to 300K uh, dollars, right? If it is a C or a C++ stack, uh, it is close to about 375 to 400K uh, dollars is the maintenance of it. And then, you know, if we have to uh, look at it, on an average for 1 million lines of code, the total amount of maintenance effort after one year, the code is a maintenance code base, depending upon your product uh, life cycle. The investment that needs to come from the organization is the, the is this particular quantum. Okay, and imagine just about, you know, uh, uh, there is a stack of about 10 million lines of code or 20 million uh, lines of code very easily we are actually talking uh, you know only as maintenance uh, close to about 6 million to uh, 7 million right so and then if we just keep uh, adding things like you know uh, building the technical debt on this uh, stack right uh, increasing amount of duplication right i i, I just want it uh, in another two hours right i just copy paste it i have uh, uh, 15 product configurations. I just copy this particular snippet in all the uh, 15 product configurations, right? And then uh, I miss out on two configurations. It uh, ends up in a field call, right? For that. Okay. So th these are all the uh, side effects that uh, uh, comes in. Uh, having a boy scout rule, right? If I see an issue, do I solve the full issue or I actually uh, uh, just do my work for today or that particular task and uh, keep uh, moving on, right? So again, this is related back to the uh, culture, uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, systems thinking, uh, problem solving, right? You know, of course, you would have heard uh, uh, quite a bit of these things. Uh, as I said, software development is a cultural movement, okay? And we, we actually need to look at it more as a cultural aspect rather than looking at, uh, uh, you know, hey, I need to do some changes, I will do it, I will keep moving on. This is somebody else problem to solve it for uh, tomorrow, right? So uh, uh, if we leave things as it is, right, it would result in a broken window concept, uh, which, which in simple terms mean that, you know, if one pane of the window is broken, right? Uh, people would actually, uh, so you are actually waiting for a crime scene to happen where all the windows would be uh, broken, right? So this is the uh, analogy over there. So our, if we do not address few of these things, okay, our code stack would tend towards the uh, broken window. And that is also a key reason why we had introduced this particular tune program where we could correct a lot of things at a developer level in order to make all these things, you know, towards a yeah, better software development culture. Okay. Uh, 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 some of the transformation programs uh, that is uh, continuously happening, okay, uh, I'm not going to touch uh, the whole of it, right, because 
this is just to give an idea or a landscape uh, when we say transformation, what is it that is uh, running? Okay, uh, we have something called as the software excellence uh, framework, and then uh, you know, in, in I'll just uh, do it uh, pretty quickly. We first started with the scaled agile uh, framework. Uh, we have close to about hundred uh, agile restraints that are running in the organization. Close to four thousand five hundred people. Uh, there are uh, close to about fifty plus SPCs. Uh, uh, good results that has uh, come in. Okay, craft uh, starting with very very fundamental things of shift left quality, addressing uh, you know things at a developer level. As I quote, the developer gets the uh, list of uh, issues that are there. So even before uh, he could actually commit uh, his or her code, right? So we enable an uh, uh, improvement opportunity for the developer to correct, so that it doesn't get into the commit stage, it doesn't get into the pull request, it doesn't get into the nightly build, it doesn't get into the integration. Because if you just keep these cycles, right? What you are actually doing is you are increasing your uh, list of uh, rework for a, a wrong uh, commit. Uh, technical debt, yes, uh, that's a very familiar term in the industry. Uh, then uh, uh, we have something like a dot connect. The dot connect are uh, programs where, you know, we do multiple workshops, either one-on-one -on -one with the developer, depending on his or need, or a group workshop for for example, there is a, uh, a new algorithm uh, uh, that needs to be done. Or if it is a code refactoring, uh, where we would just like to throw away uh, 300K uh, uh, lines of code, right? So those are programs you know, which are addressed by uh, .connect. Uh, the dot grow is uh, skill and capability building uh, you know uh, primarily um, uh, this is to uh, scale up people for the uh, new digital uh, transformation uh, devops uh, 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 i think you know we 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 have heard about it the source code uh, we are actually building a culture all code that is written within philips okay by default that should be available for anyone and everyone Okay, so uh, that is the first rule. The second rule is then if you actually want to keep it as closed source, depending upon IP, uh, depending upon um, uh, some uh, um, uh, potential uh, patent aspects that are there, okay, then okay, that you can actually term it as closed source and it is available only to that limited set of uh, project team. And then we uh, heavily encourage people to be on open source uh, as well which means that uh, if you have something which you could share with the wider uh, industry, you could uh, do it. In fact, from the Software Center of Excellence, periodically we even keep uh, posting in LinkedIn and other uh, places, uh, some of the work, what we have uh, done, especially on uh, shift lift uh, quality, then we have something called as a, a smart test ordering, which will automatically look at the changes in your functional test uh, at the code level. And then you know it will say that uh, uh, where it is impacted in your code base as well as the uh, test, and you could quickly go and correct it. So uh, we have actually made these uh, stuff as open source; anybody could uh, uh, pick it up, okay? Um, and uh, uh, it is uh, available. I can even share those uh, links uh, later. And the Dotune program is actually part of this whole transformation program. And primarily, we would uh, work in uh, uh, revolving around eliminating the uh, waste that uh, development is. And for today's session, that is where you know we would spend our uh, time, and then we will uh, look into it. I will just quickly skip this. These are some uh, results, uh, like you know, uh, from the transformation program year on year. Uh, we actually look into uh, how do we do, what do we do, right? Because we need to have continuous uh, flow of uh, data. I will uh, skip this particular uh, slide. Uh, coming to the uh, waste uh, uh, challenge, right? Um, uh, if you actually look at it, all of us love to be uh, productive and uh, effective. Okay, and then uh, again, just linking back to the uh, behavior, how do I take care of productive behavior, and how do I do? Uh, you know, if something is un unproductive, okay, what do I do? Do I know what are the things that are slowing me uh, down? Uh, a classical example, right? You know, uh, people say that it is just a two-line change in uh, code. By the time uh, some changes are being done to the time releases made for the two-line change of code, right? You could see that it almost takes about uh, three months uh, time. 
and the reason being is that you know the uh, the court complexity level the next surrounding uh, bits and uh, pieces of it okay uh, the changes what i have done here uh, uh, if it has to be reflected in another eight or nine product configurations how should i uh, handle it so these are some of the things like you know since the complexity is uh, very high around it we do not know right you know what is it that is really uh, slowing us uh, down okay and am i going to take actions to uh, reduce it so we said that okay, let's put a program uh, together and try to achieve a culture of uh, zero waste okay and uh, look at uh, quantifying and uh, eliminating the uh, waste and uh, productivity or predictability quality would be the uh, by products of uh, this so when we started this program very small right you know uh, in in our observation i'll come in the next slide what we uh, do here because uh, we do not uh, for example you know uh, straight away quantify like you know hey, the whole meeting is a waste right or uh, the way of working is a waste and so on so uh, this is more to do at developer level and also surrounding the uh, areas in and uh, around it okay um, most important i reiterate okay the when we gain an opportunity okay so we, we first initially said to the leadership Hey, uh, very easily we could give you greater than ten uh, percent uh, improvement. Okay, so that's that's you know the first projection which we made on just observing a group of about uh, ten people uh, in in various domains in a couple of businesses and then made a pitch to the uh, leadership. Okay, then uh, you know they said okay go ahead uh, let's see uh, where we uh, get into and then uh, in in the, in the program itself we said that. Um, uh, reallocation of this productivity. Let's say I have a group of, uh, uh, of about 100 people. Okay, I get about a productivity savings of uh, 10 FTE over the year. What do I do with the 10 FTE? Okay, right. So in all these cases, they are actually moved into the new NPI, which means that next year when you are asking for the new NPI budget, you start factor factoring in the gains what you do today. Okay, so that you know, uh, uh, of course, uh, for example, you know, uh, we need to set up a huge uh, DevOps uh, team, right? So, are we actually just going to keep growing exponentially, or are we going to make uh, efforts from these uh, productivity uh, gains? So, these are some of the uh, the constant discussions that uh, take place. So, how does this particular uh, program uh, work? Uh, it is based on deep observations by qualified uh, experts, uh, uh, right? You know, depending upon uh, whichever is the uh, native uh, language uh, they are in. Uh, the participation from any developer is voluntary, right? And then we actually request for close to sixty to ninety minutes from the developer. And all we say that is that, you know, hey, we will just observe you in your work. And then we would ask you probably in that one hour of observation, close to uh, four to five uh, questions, just to understand what you are doing. And, you know, and post the observation session, we will have a, uh, 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 a feedback session, right? And it could be any task that has been assigned to the engineer for that day so that the actual work of the engineer is never uh, disturbed and then you know we also make them quite comfortable so that it doesn't become like you know uh, uh, just on a joking way it doesn't become a surveillance uh, work of what the developer he or she uh, does right and all the information that is actually gathered here does not go into uh, for example uh, a performance appraisal or it doesn't get into uh, uh, you know the development goals of that uh, engineer and uh, so on so so there is nothing like you know we just make uh, an observation and say that try to grade this engineer on a scale of 1 to 10 or oh, here is the engineer with about 6 and then you know the person has to improve or increase their skill set to uh, 9 and so on so right you know we we, we make those things very uh, clear the only thing is we say that they don't say to us you know i am actually making a, a, a training session or we are in a meeting please come and uh, observe it we say that this is a hardcore coding work or a design work 
okay or um, uh, a bug fixing uh, work or if you are solving any uh, field call issue algorithmic work right you know so we say that uh, you know uh, bring those type of uh, tasks so that you know the expectation is uh, clear uh, we also collect a feedback survey which is anonymous and the main intention of that feedback is to consolidate and collate a lot of these patterns right you know uh, leading to uh, these behaviors so that we could ensure that it is not repeated or made as a learning for uh, someone else back in the uh, organization uh, we had also done a privacy compliance assessment uh, on this and uh, uh, we have have a go ahead from the uh, philips legal uh, you know in complaints with the uh, european uh, laws that uh, we are not violating any of the uh, privacy uh, constraints right so i i will just skip this particular uh, slide because uh, whatever i spoke in the uh, previous one um, it is the same here just wanted to say here uh, we also make businesses uh, part of it right and then we actually say that after we do Uh, let us say uh, observations in a business we actually train and coach a, one of the key or two key persons within the business who could actually take up the same observation role and then they could actually make it uh, further uh, uh, you know uh, uh, shareable within that business so that it actually uh, sticks there the changes uh, sticks there okay and uh, of course uh, is there a, a scientific reason over what we do right you know we actually had uh, uh, um, a lot of data that we got collected before starting this particular program okay so if you actually see here on a simple question do you see repetitive waste patterns in your uh, business okay and then uh, okay uh, people say that you know okay opportunity for waste elimination right uh, up to 34% of the people said 5 to 10% could be removed 8% said that 10 to 15 uh, could be removed uh, uh, up to 5% uh, waste is there 25% of the participants said and then uh, 33% said that Uh, we do not know this is quite interesting so we have 33% uh, population uh, uh, you know just be it a tech lead or a architect or a project manager right you know uh, who do not know okay there is a waste uh, which is there in the system or uh, not okay because the proximity of our work or you know getting into the day to day operations sometimes blinds us okay so that that's the uh, so there is a huge opportunity for converting this 33% towards the uh, other percentages right where uh, we could uh, uh, get it so uh, where does the uh, waste go and what buckets it does uh, fall in okay so if you actually look here uh, uh, the repetitive uh, waste okay uh, many a times repeated manual uh, testing i just uh, pass a particular parameter right and then uh, i actually you know do my coding i invoke my parameter manually give those values manually and uh, do it okay i repeat this particular sequence of uh, checks close to 25 to 30 uh, times all it needs is a one line script to say that hey temperature okay pass this parameter okay the normal range should be uh, between uh, 90 to uh, uh, 108 uh, degree uh, fahrenheit okay fahrenheit um, and then you know if it doesn't match for it or the glucose tolerance value should be uh, this okay if it goes beyond the boundary okay insert and assert right so these are all uh, simple uh, 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 one line automated uh, scripts that you could do as part of your development and then as you type you know that could actually run and give you the results hey you are doing something uh, uh, wrong okay um, <coughs> so similarly like you know the waiting base we uh, looked at the uh, start of it right you could also see that uh, you know we have uh, too much of uh, duplication uh, debugging without uh, uh, break points okay uh, again uh, code is built but uh, waiting to get uh, deployed it is always there on the uh, staging right uh, how do you handle uh, blue green uh, deployment Uh, remote uh, desk software uh, deployment uh, i i'll just you know uh, uh, come here in my uh, next slide uh, you could actually see that uh, um, uh, a small example i'll just there is a small video here how do we do it so this is a developer desktop i had taken permission from the observee 
to show this particular video snippet i have actually uh, made it uh, faster so that you know uh, as part of the one hour observation uh, it doesn't uh, just give me one minute yeah Okay, so so while the video is uh, playing, some of the things what you uh, notice around uh, there, okay, multiple context switching by the uh, developer, right? Uh, chat programming with a uh, lot of people in order to uh, uh, get some information or uh, saying that hey this is what is uh, happening around okay delayed action uh, then you could also see that you know the uh, engineer is switching on uh, to uh, look at some information related to uh, uh, image scans and how that particular uh, scan needs to be uh, uh, looked into right so i, I just made the video uh, uh, run very fast but this is the work uh, within an uh, one hour uh, duration okay and uh, okay so if you actually look here and and in fact you know this is also feedback back to the uh, developer and uh, also uh, look at the uh, responsiveness uh, you know in terms of um, uh, the developer in taking it in a very uh, positive uh, way okay multiple sources of uh, truth right you know you the, the person keeps switching from uh, close to six to seven sources of uh, truth right and each sources of truth when you actually keep switching like this you have that much of base that gets uh, gained in the uh, system okay uh, context switching between the work the person is doing okay now they quickly they have to shift towards the uh, image they have to shift towards the uh, uh, there are also a few things that uh, comes as uh, uh, you know the disturbance or uh, asking some other person and waiting for the feedback from an architect or uh, a person okay um, uh, can we have all uh, information together uh, as a tribal knowledge because there are a lot of uh, experts within the uh, organization uh, who could uh, do it right you know who could uh, help us with the one key point which i wanted to uh, uh, state here is when the developer has their tech lead architect or project manager okay who are with them and shows an interest in the work that has been done by the uh, developer right you know automatically uh, we have seen that you know the uh, the level of engagement and also the pride increases to a great extent when i say the pride increases to a great extent see i have a person who cares for me i have a manager who cares for me and who is interested in the work that is being uh, done okay so uh, we just pick up some of these uh, patterns and put it into a wiki page right you know for example this whole of uh, uh, in many areas we have actually uh, refactored the uh, uh, including test code right and then uh, uh, very recently there is also an example where um, uh, 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 using simple techniques the team found out that uh, close to 300 kilo lines of dead code could could be uh, removed from the system because each of the for example at least talking for the uh, medical systems domain um, uh, the stacks are close to about uh, you know 10 million lines of code and uh, on an average they have a 10 year uh, uh, life uh, expectancy right so um, uh, always uh, in these things you know uh, people say that hey never disturb a working system leave it as it is you do uh, something right you know you have find out where to do a change just copy it into a new class okay uh, uh, pass that particular parameter into that uh, method and then uh, leave it there do not do uh, anything else because we do not know what impact it would uh, create okay just go back to the uh, the culture part of it 
boy scout rule okay if you just leave it today as it is again tomorrow you are creating a maintenance headache for uh, your own and for the uh, next uh, person right again these are some uh, examples okay so when we actually show these patterns to the uh, leadership uh, continuously so there is a great amount of uh, uh, engagement they they want to do and uh, they also always would like to uh, pair up uh, with us uh, in this slide you know i just wanted to uh, highlight here okay uh, uh, i have just included few more slides so that you know when i share it uh, uh, you will get a, uh, a good view of uh, what it is all uh, about um, you can see there same base patterns 65% this is actually coming from a feedback survey 65% probability okay whatever is the waste that is seen in my place okay i could relate it it is there with another developer in my scrum team it is there in the uh, uh, in my floor in my uh, overall uh, agile release uh, training okay right and then individually uh, third i on what do we uh, do um, out of the box uh, blah 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 okay uh, the program has a score of about uh, 8.4 okay so some of these ways we uh, saw in the uh, uh, the previous uh, slide as well okay so after we do an observation what do we do we run some uh, workshops uh, with the team as i said at the beginning this is for a very small uh, 40 member uh, team okay when we actually uh, did this observation so this is just to get a view uh, of uh, uh, what do we do so within that 40 member 32 people uh, signed up okay and then we did those uh, observations and uh, 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 okay so they actually classified uh, where their particular waste patterns are there and then uh, they even said that hey what are the things that needs to be reinforced what actions we want to uh, take and uh, also there were few items which is actually uh, uh, got some more new investments the business said hey uh, i am not going to do new investment now but i actually want to do, do uh, things which are in my control as a first and foremost and they took these top seven actions okay and then that actually based on the actions that were there it oh, it, it actually you know the team said that we could save about 22000 hours and you know uh, at the current cost uh, that actually translates to about 600 k, uh, k uh, euro so this uh, team started in q2 they are running their actions in uh, q3 and in q4 they said that you know we could uh, save 4000 hours which is about 115k euro and uh, in the uh, next year they said that you know uh, uh, we would get the uh, remainder of these uh, improvements this, this is just to give an idea if for example, somebody who is very uh, keen about return on investments and what do we want to do about it? Okay, there is a possibility you could go in that particular uh, direction uh, as well. Okay, so again, so these are all uh, coming from the, uh, uh, just added some business results. I will share the deck, uh, you could uh, look into it. Here, if you actually look at it, um, after we do this, is it possible to uh, sustain, right? So feature A, B, C, you could actually see that, you know, the original estimate was 23 uh, person months, okay? And uh, based on the observations and the new patterns, the team has already started implementing. They were actually, and with reduced complexity uh, in the code, they were able to finish within uh, 12 person months, okay? So this is all from one same uh, project uh, team, okay? Uh, where uh, uh, because of the reduction in the overall uh, complexity, uh, putting across the new way of uh, working, uh, primarily having shift left uh, part of it, because we always do estimation based on past projects, right? The first estimate was this. And then when we actually completed the actual work, you could actually see the uh, gain that has uh, come. So uh, this, this is primarily to answer the question, right? You know, hey, is it possible to uh, sustain? Okay. Um, so how do we want to uh, uh, scale it up, right? Uh, uh, make business part of the uh, problem, the crime, okay? And uh, uh, when, uh, uh, you know, when a person observes, right, you know, uh, developers within their own as well as outside the uh, work, okay? So there is a lot of learning under tribe knowledge that could be generated and another interesting pattern what uh, we have seen is we have seen many people who as observers when they come in 
they actually go and ask the same person whom they observed, hey, please come and observe my work and provide me the uh, same uh, feedback. Okay, so uh, it, it no longer remains as a judgmental uh, aspects because many a time, you know, when I uh, actually I even attended a few external events uh, to find out, you know, what is being done in the uh, industry to uh, get this uh, work going on. We see that, you know, people primarily focus on uh, things like, uh, hey, let us improve uh, uh, agile way of working. Okay, uh, let us improve, uh, uh, you know, uh, meeting, uh, let us improve, uh, 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 you know, uh, waiting uh, waste and things like that. Okay, but if you actually get at the code level, a uh, lot of these uh, improvements, you know, uh, you could actually see uh, results visible, uh, I would say the next moment, the next day, the next month and uh, so on. Right. Uh, uh, many people want to call it as pair programming uh, equivalent. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter what you want to actually call in the uh, name, whatever works for you. Okay. Very easily it could be uh, done. All it needs is some uh, 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 deep level observation at uh, senior uh, levels. I talked about the dot connect program. So it's a it's a theme of workshops, right? You know, uh, and then uh, uh, from there only we got this idea for uh, dot tune, where we just uh, tune the parameters and then try to get the uh, uh, best. Um, uh, summarizing, okay. Uh, when we actually get into a deliberate practice, that is repeating the, the same good work what we do. Okay, Again, I make a very classical differentiation between repetition versus duplication. Uh, I am not uh, a, a, a favorable person for duplication at all. But when we do a task, okay, we actually uh, gain the mastery and uh, skill to complete that particular task. And when we actually do it again and again in a right manner, it actually acts as a deliberate factors. And then these are something which uh, uh, helps us to uh, get into the uh, next uh, level. Uh, would be more than happy to partner with uh, anyone to share more details. Uh, improving the uh, software excellence, share ideas, okay, and how could we uh, make it uh, better? Okay, I uh, end there. Thank you so much, uh, Sumeris, and it was amazing. Thank you for sharing those insights and um, all the data and the beautiful journeys that you've gone through. Thank you very much. So from, uh, from the chat, I do not see any questions. Um, in the question and answer, there is just one question that's come up in the recent. I'm going to read, read it out for yeah, you. Yeah, please. That would be helpful. Um, it's from uh, uh, Ashwat Narayana. He says, I agree with some aspects, uh, but somehow I feel there is micromanaging, uh, that this is micromanaging, where a developer just needs to glue to code writing window and keep on coding without turning around. Okay, see, uh, for uh, this also, the other thing is, okay, um, uh, uh, for example, there is also an option, right? The person can just record only that particular window, okay, uh, without even, you know, uh, uh, turning around or whatever it is. And then, for example, uh, I did not go into the uh, finer details of it, okay, when you actually do an observation, it is possible that you know you get a personal call or you want to move out okay or you want to say that uh, hey uh, 20 minutes now there is a focused work next 20 minutes i am taking a break followed by a work okay you can just record that and even send it to any observer of your liking within your business or outside your uh, business Okay, or if the observee wants a completely different pattern, okay, by saying that, hey, I don't want it to be observed, come, let us do a pair chatting together in the sense like, you know, hey, this is, so we actually enable a desktop where both of us could uh, code together. And then, you know, we just ask the person to do the coding. And then we actually do a parallel coding with that person saying that, hey, do you think that if you do it this way, would it uh, appear better? Thank you, Sundarisan. Hey, thanks, thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, hope uh, uh, you know I was able to uh, get across the uh, message.